partner with what God has done to make it manifest. So sometimes with all due respect, we say things like, if God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Of course, I know that those who say that are very well intentioned and they are sincere. But from the lens of scripture, that is not an accurate statement. How many times have you believed what God has said and agreed with it and confessed it and it did not work? Because it takes more than that. The entire journey of obedience is beyond the realm of confession. Confession is part of the process. But obedience is predicated on understanding. Number one, you need to know the provisions that have been there. Number two, you need to know the conditions allocated for those promises to be made manifest. And then you need to obtain grace from God to walk in keeping with those conditions. That is what is responsible for manifestation. Hallelujah. So I can know that Jesus died, defeated Satan, death, hell, and the grave. I can know that for a fact. But ladies and gentlemen, I can know that I've been translated from every curse. And I can even stand to declare, in the name of Jesus, there is no curse upon my life. In the name of Jesus. Oh, my grandfather worshipped this. My grandmother worshipped this. In the name of Jesus, I am free from it. And yet, after all of that confession, it looks like Satan is just watching you. And say, just finish and get out of the way for me. And then you find out that there are many people who will tell you, Apostle, I'm fasting, I'm praying. And in the midst of the fasting and prayer, I still see demons come to oppress me. You see that? And sometimes we men of God are at a loss as to why, you know, what should have caused that now. And we say, just go, you are not serious with God, that's why. It's not true. It's not true. That person is very serious with God. That's even why Satan is oppressing the person. Hallelujah. I'm saying that because it's happening to many of us. And sometimes we come to church and we just say amen. But we live back with our various questions and our frustrations. And sooner or later, the believer will become discouraged and say, you know what? I love the Lord. I will still keep doing church. But I will really go and find a solution that befits my problem. It's why there is a mix of the Christian faith and many other extra biblical practices today. And then we say things like the word of God works and that is so true. But the average believer has not experienced perpetually the victory that is in Christ. If we are to be honest and we are to admit it, a few people may have received like trickles of rain, a few testimonies here and there, but most believers are yet to walk in the experience of this abundant life, the experience of this victory in Christ. The average believer does not have the confidence to be able to reproduce the victory in Christ here and now. It's like if it happens, let it happen. So we pray, for instance, and we say, Father, give me a job, change my life, do this and that. If it so happens, we say, wow, it happened. If it does not happen, after all, we knew it would not happen. The fundamentals of redemption it is true that you and i have authority over satan but it's important for us to understand the jurisdiction of authority and how to exercise that authority and the lord placed it in my heart that the end time church needs to walk in the reality of dominion i repeat over unclean spirits dominion over sicknesses and diseases hallelujah and then dominion over resources. This one has plagued many believers. Resources. The inability to be able to have command of the resources it takes to live a decent and a meaningful life and then to be part of God's end time program. The greatest attack that will come upon the saints will come in these three areas. Satan is fashioning a very dangerous weapon to bring upon the believers that it looks like the devil wants to make a caricature of Christians and to mock them that while we are serving God and rolling on the floor there are spirits that seem to move unhindered destroying families writing negative narratives over our lives hallelujah Elijah got angry because it looked like the silence had emboldened the prophets of Baal 
and he got angry one day and said you know what we're going to stop being in a straight betwixt if god be god serve him if bell be god serve him let's go up the mountain let's prove once and for all that the god that answers by fire let that be the god listen i believe with all my heart that the end time church is going to rise with such power and grace you will see a widespread manifestation of dominion can i tell you there is no church as an institution and as a local assembly that demonstrates authority over spirits authority over sickness authority over resources that will be empty in this end time because the major problem of men is centered around these three things people will run anywhere they know that they can find solution over courses over spirits over yokes many of you have left your homes to come now it didn't matter to you what sermon you were going to hear your major concern was that I carried this spirit disturbing me. I transported it to Koinonia and let it sit down with me here in hope that someone with the power and the wisdom from God will be able to bring that separation. When someone leaves his home, ladies and gentlemen, and comes and sits down here, and after two, three hours, every curse, every yoke, every pronouncement upon that person gives way, and he returns back home, and the testimonies that follow liberty, testimonies that follow liberty, not assumed stories, not assumed testimonies, by Monday, doors are open as proof that Satan has left you. Tuesday, doors are open. Your loved ones say, what happened? They usually would not listen to you. But now this is a manifestation that is foreign to the history of this family. We've not seen breakthrough like this. A young boy that was, that was missing suddenly returns back home. Most people do not understand the publicity power that victory over spirits and victory over sickness and victory over resources can bring to the name of the lord wait until you find a family of 10 people impoverished financially and within one month one by one god begins to sign you know how you sign a register the sister comes and god opens a door the brother comes and god opens a door the one who is a missionary that as though he has been caused all kinds of doors open have you seen someone who was sick and became healed did you not cry as bold as you are most people have not seen genuine healing miracles in a consistent way the way people testify in church sometimes you are even it's as if they are not sure themselves it's almost as if they were saying just go and say something genuine miracles that you watch somebody who came sick with the medical reports I was very blessed hearing the testimonies there are notable miracles that you cannot deny they are proof of the hand of God are we together ladies and gentlemen the dominion of the saints must be well represented in the area of dominion over sicknesses and diseases I've had the honor and the privilege of praying for people. My phone is full of needs. Sometimes I feel guilty because I'm not able to attend to as many needs. And I say, oh God, please keep raising people. The more people are raised, the more some of us can rest. When there are few people, you, you can die prematurely because of the burden that comes. You are sleeping, that's when the time zone somewhere, someone is waking up. And you see people sending scripture, apostle, I will not let you rest. I'm like the woman with the issue of blood. You must do this and I'm saying, oh God. Do you know why? Because they perceive that if one word comes from you, they will be healed. Now the question is, will it really happen? Or will you dash their hopes many of you have come here now believing probably you were motivated by others to say look come home and sit down one prophetic word and you go back and your life will change now you have come and you are sitting more than the truths i'm teaching you are aware of the problems that brought you here and can i tell you the truth any man of god who does not respect the pain and the problem of people who come to him will soon be preaching to an empty pew people have real problems and when they are pressed, every man's need is his point of contact. It's also his point of attention. 
when I'm speaking along an area of your need, you suddenly lighten up. Aha, uh -huh, my word is coming. What is he saying now? dominion over unclean spirits there are many of you who are seated here now the reason why your loved ones have refused to be saved is that they have watched your life they watch your zeal versus the performance of the word in your life and the gap is too wide to convince them and so every time you tell them i'm going to church they say save johnny carry this your burden of religion out of my face let me manage the spirits that i'm dealing with now whether it's through appeasal or occultic manipulation let me just be managing it there but here comes a generation ladies and gentlemen men who will understand this thing with power that we will demonstrate such levels of power dominion over this unclean spirit that it should not take one year to get spirits out of a family it should not take one year for god's sake to rewrite the story of a person one time they showed me they showed me true story i think maybe we may even be a family here they showed me the photo of one of their fathers the legs here i mean the whole thing you could see the bone because I don't know what kind of condition that was. I just know it is of the devil. I've had the honor of seeing and being part of phenomenal miracles. And even as a man of God, you will think walking in this dimension for many years will get you used to it. Every spectacular manifestation of the hand of God leaves everybody, including the vessel, in awe. You stand and you say, God, what is this? What is this? A family called me one time, a simple prayer for them, and this satanic spirit just gave way. And my goodness, the doors that opened for them. Now the woman there in UK, she's giving birth next, next month, I think, or something, and property they've not been able to. And these are people who love God. They have served God. Let me speak over your life. In the name of Jesus, every spirit that followed you here, Provided this is koinonia and we bear the name of the Lord, it must let you go now. It must let you go now. Listen, sit down, please. 